I got lost. Okay, this process, mm -hmm. dropping off, picking up, saturation rate, it's gonna pick up one, two, three, four, all of this, okay? Believe it or not, the receptors, do you guys remember like the uh, chemoreceptors, the peripheral chemoreceptors and everything? The overall goal, even though it's to match the demands of the body, the overall goal meet the demand of the brain. Not the demand for oxygen, well, sort of, okay? But make sure the pH of the brain stays adjusted correctly. Because it wants to protect the brain first? Yes. Okay. It wants to protect the brain first. How else have we talked about the brain getting protected first? Sugar. The mm -hmm. glucose. The sugar. So now it's like, hey, whoa, you've got to make sure this respiration rate is right because I can't have my pH off in my brain. <gasps> Maybe that's what's wrong. <laughs> so how do you do that? Do you go in and say, can I get a pH test for my brain? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all know me. I might figure it out. So <laughs> the relationship is actually pretty cool. So oxygen, we know hemoglobin, okay? Carbon dioxide. I now want to go to the doctor and say, my anatomy and physiology two teacher suggested I get a brain pH test. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Dr. Janet Young. I didn't say that. <laughs> Y'all know that. I'm laughing inside thinking about it. Now the carbon dioxide gives us a little more trouble because remember, if we're dependent upon blood flow, okay, if we're dependent upon blood, this means that it has a huge amount of water, okay, and if you put CO2, which we put a lot of it, okay, into this water substance, it turns it into carbonic acid. And even though that's the acid that you might have in a soda, okay, it's not very acidic, it still changes the pH level of the blood, okay? Something we can't do. So, the carbon dioxide, we transport the CO2 that gets produced at the tissue level. We can transport it as carbon, uh, carbonic acid. We can transport it as something called, and I spelled that wrong, I'm sorry, that should be an A, not an I carbamino compounds or the dissolved gas. So if we're at the tissue level, the waste product given off at that level is the CO2. So when the CO2 makes it into the blood vessel, okay, well, you put the CO2 into something water, you're going to form carbonic acid. Now what happens is <clears throat> it can dissociate into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. So if I take CO2 plus water, oh man, I got another one. That should be at the bottom. It can become carbonic acid, or it will become, okay? The carbonic acid can break down into a bicarb or H plus ion. Is there a problem there? Where is my problem with this? My H pluses. Because the H pluses are going to affect my pH in the blood. So, there's got to be something else that'll happen. It does, for the most part. A very small amount of the CO2 is going to attach to some uh, plasma proteins, and very little of the CO2, however, will bind to the amino group of the plasma protein, and it can do it to hemoglobin too but very little of this takes place. The majority 
goes in this direction right here. And we have to take care of it. And then the remaining amount is going to be as a dissolved gas. When we look at the carbon dioxide, the cool thing about CO2, CO2 does not compete with O2, all right? O2, the oxygen, is carried by the heme group, okay, on the hemoglobin. If there's not an oxygen there, CO2 is not going to try to make it to that spot, okay? They don't compete. Now, does that mean that the hemoglobin or the red blood cell doesn't carry this? No, because it does, all right? What will happen is they will act, the CO2 can actually bind to another spot on the hemoglobin and be carried by the hemoglobin. But very little does that, okay? Very little of the CO2 that gets produced is going to travel by way of the hemoglobin. Very little is going to travel by way of these amino groups on a protein. So we can have hemoglobin transport both oxygen and CO2 and I think this is where sometimes there's some misunderstanding because I think people think that sometimes the CO2 takes the place of the oxygen. No, okay. It can still carry, that red blood cell can still carry oxygen and CO2, it's just carrying the CO2 at a different place, all right? And it can transport both. Um, the one thing about it though, with CO2 and O2, even though that it, they both can be transported, they don't want in any way to compete with each other. They really don't. They don't want to compete with each other. So is ferronic acid good in any way for the body? used in any way. When, now are you saying like this that we get produced or something that we consume? So I was going to leave something that we consume because if we're trying to get rid of it outside, if it's not used in the body, then consuming it is very dangerous because yes, we don't, we're trying to get rid of it and we're increasing the pH. Right. People who drink a lot of sodas, okay? Like, I knew this lady who drank, um, I don't know, probably 10 sodas a day, okay? And, you know, she had kidney disease and everything. Because the body was having to compensate for all this extra acid coming in. And when you take that in, in that form, it has to be buffered. And so the body has to make sure that it's buffering the pH. Also, I feel like if you're drinking 10 sodas a day, you're not drinking like hardly any water, anywhere close to enough. And your kidneys are not going to function the same. You're not going to go to the bathroom. It actually creates a situation of dehydration within the body. Isn't there something, too, when you consume, if you consume alcohol that has a effervescent soda in it, you know, like vodka tonic, gin and tonic, okay. vodka soda, doesn't it get into your bloodstream faster? It opens up the duodenum and causes it to absorb faster in your bloodstream by having a carbonation with the alcohol? I thought that was if it was caffeinated. Uh, it's about the um, carbonation. I, I, that I don't know. I thought I've always read that about like if you, you know, you'll, you'll feel the effects of alcohol much sooner if you had like a vodka soda versus um, vodka and orange He's willing juice. to go out and test the theory. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my first okay. <laughs> There you go. I don't know. Yeah. I'm um, just looking up my break. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not it's sure. If you mix it yeah. with, you know, like cola, so it's not. So it's, it's not, not good, good to have a lot of carbonation. Yeah. Um, so if you think about like carbonated water, you think about sparkling wines, um, that sort of thing. Sodas are not good for you. Actually, they say one a day is not good for you. 
I think maybe I have one soda a year. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I don't even know if I have it once a year. So, yeah, I don't drink any sodas, anything carbonated. So now that we've made it into the bloodstream and we have begun the travels around to the tissues of the body, the next place that we've got to have gas exchange is at the tissue level. And this is now the systemic gas exchange. <coughs> when we get to the tissue level, all right, so we've got our alveolar and now systemic down here at these tissues. Tissues, for the most part, okay, we're going to find our mitochondria. Mitochondria in their cellular respiration are going to give off CO2. So at the tissue level, out here in this extracellular fluid, in this extracellular fluid, we can have the buildup of this waste, the CO2. And when we have the capillary meeting this tissue level, okay, we can have the movement of these gases move back and forth. Because we're going to have O2 traveling, okay, and that's going to be on my red blood cell, all right? And then we got all the other stuff that's in the blood, stuff that might need to be dropped off or whatever. But at this point, we're worried about the gases, okay? The CO2 and the O2. So when we're at this tissue level, the tissue level, we're going to try to load the CO2, and we're going to try to unload the O2. Once again, we're still dealing with these gas laws, okay? We still got Dalton, we still got Henry, okay? So once again, we still got these gas laws and a couple others that come into play. So what should happen is at the tissue level, there should be a high amount of CO2, not a lot of oxygen. And the pressures in the fluids of the tissue and the blood are going to help with movement of these gases. So, goal CO2 in, the O2 that's needed out. Now, in this movement of the CO2, CO2, if you remember, could travel in three ways. All right? So, CO2, this dissolved gas, very little, okay, was the dissolved gas, right? Okay, very little was attached to the amino group or the hemoglobin, right? The majority is going to move into this water environment and it's going to become that carbonic acid, okay? When we talked about red blood cells, do you remember me mentioning? something called carbonic anhydrase. All right, well, they do, okay? Red blood cells contain this enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. What do you think it's going to do? Huh? Break down there. It's going to affect it, right? It's going to affect what gets produced in this, car in this carbonic acid, okay? Now, here's the thing. That enzyme is found in the red blood cell. So this is telling me that even though I might have my blood vessel, all right, my red blood cell that's here in this blood vessel, a little bit of that CO2 is going to go in as the dissolved gas. A little bit of it is going to become those carbamino compounds. The majority of it is going to hit into that carbonic acid. The red blood cell, 
however, is what contains that carbonic anhydrase. So CO2, as we look at the processes to break it down, to make it carryable, okay, we're going to need this. So this means we're going to need the red blood cell. The red blood cells, when we have the process of the CO2 plus the water and we get the carbonic acid and then it breaks down into the bicarb ion and the H plus, okay? What the blood cell will do when that process occurs in the red blood cell, it'll actually take the bicarb ion, which is now buffered, okay, and exchange it for chlorine in the blood plasma. And when did you say that this happens? In the red blood cell. So when the CO2 is picked up at the tissue level, and we have all of that stuff taking place at that level, it's taking place in the red blood cell. Because the red blood cell contains the carbonic anhydrase to do this. When you say that it's 